mean, um, you know, Wyndham kind of came back to Choice and said, hey, listen, we are, uh, the words that they used were, it was underwhelming, highly conditional, and subject to significant business, regulatory, and execution risk. And the way that I read that and, and my initial take on the deal was, you know, if they were going to go with the financing that they proposed, which was half cash, you're talking about $4 billion that likely would come from the debt markets. We put that into perspective about where the debt markets are now and where interest rates are. I don't know if you necessarily would like the, you know, cost of financing this sort of transaction, um, considering where cash flows could potentially be for the two companies. What do you think the cost of financing would be? Are we talking like Carnival Cruise uh, pandemic level costs? No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't think they would be that high. We're, we're looking at two companies. So Choice is triple B minus by Moody's and S and P, or B A three by Moody's and triple B minus by S and P. And then you have Wyndham, which is one notch lower. So it's the highest notch in high yield, which is B B A one double B plus. And so those two companies together would probably command um, somewhere closer to to what we've been seeing across you know, standard sort of high yield rates. Um, What's the now number? the question is- we, we don't watch junk debt all day. What's the number? How much? <laughs> well, it depends when the transaction gets done because interest rates have been changing all the time. I mean, I think, I think you know, the key is- 9% for, for this, the question is, double digits? <laughs> no, no, I, I think it's a little bit less than 9% at this point. I mean, I think, you know, if, if, if we're talking about, okay, so we're saying it's a $4 billion company. I think the big question is, for a company like this, you say, okay, $4 billion company, they are, or $4 billion of debt, rather, for a company that combined would be about $3 billion in in revenue. You know, it's it's sort of like a weird scenario because you're like, okay, would, would investors really feel comfortable with that? Would they not? You know, are we are we looking at like a 7 or 8% rate like we saw last week with um, with Norwegian? Are we looking, um, you know, is, is it going to be a little bit better than that because they're a little bit higher rated? I think it, it, it would depend, you know, where they decided to go in the, you know, in the so yield curve, although right. the yield curve right now is so flat that it doesn't matter. <laughs> so Jody, what's 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 going on in the hotel space here? Why why would why does Choice think that this is the deal to do here? So I I think what's happening with Choice right now is is you know they're they're in a spot where they've improved their balance sheet, they are starting to generate cash, they're seeing that the larger hotel companies such as the Marriotts and the Hiltons are very interested in their space. You know, they have sort of a commanding pre presence in the extended stay and budget area. That's where Wyndham operates primarily, that's where Choice operates primarily. Well, now Marriott and, and Hilton are saying we want a piece of the pie. And so they've been aggressively expanding into that area and I think Choice is trying to stay ahead of that conversation by looking at Wyndham and saying, hey, here's two very large companies. Let's also be a very large company to compete with them. So the, the budget hotel space, how is that different from, you know, where Matt stays, the, you know, the Ritz and the Four Seasons every, every time? <laughs> well, if, if he wants to check in one of the Super 8s, let me know. Okay. <laughs> is that a good business? I do want it's to. Little... I got to say, I was just, you know, I was just about before the flood a couple weeks ago to drive to Ohio, and my dream was... Um, to bring my daughter along and we would stay at a Motel 8. Really? Like, because that's what you do on Motel a road six. trip, right? It's such a cool thing. Little kids, I remember when my dad took me to stay at a Hojo's or a Motel 8 <laughs> or whatever. And it was, like, awesome then. Um, it didn't happen because of the flood. But th this, these brands would be, I mean, they would have Days In, they would have Ramada, they would have uh, Super 8, Right. That's not to be confused right. with Motel 6. So they, they have like a lot of really cool uh, brands that are still named after big automobile engines of back in the day. <laughs> um, are they are, are those like popular? Are they profitable? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're certainly profitable. You, you see cash flows generated. So the two companies each, I mean, they generate, um, you know, you're talking somewhere in the 300s range for for choice, what's to be expected for 2023 or 2024. Um, and then for, for Wyndham, you're expecting 400. At least that's what our MODL screen shows for, for consensus estimates. 
that said, I mean, I think I think it's a different sort of, you know, when, when you talk about the structure of the company, it's a different sort of concept to stay at an extended stay than it is to stay at the, you know, high end resorts. You're looking for a different feature. A lot of people who stay at extended stays are staying there for different reasons. And and also the definition of extended stay can be different among companies. So some companies like Wyndham will say extended stay, we really mean extended stay. You're doing a renovation on your house and you have to stay somewhere else for a little bit of time. Um, other companies say extended stay is more on the you know competitor to Airbnb type. So how has Airbnb kind of impacted your industry, the hotel motel business, um, just in general? I. I think, you know, what, what's most interesting is that the companies have had to reconsider how they do their business model. There's there's going to be consumers who always stay at hotels for whatever reason, whether they're dedicated to insert your favorite re, you know, uh, reward system. Uh, but then there's going to be people who are looking for the cheapest alternative and the most convenient alternative, which during the pandemic, we saw much more of that. We want a kitchen. We want this. We want that. That's going to come with this day. We just don't want a small hotel room, particularly if we're trying to stay away from other people. That might shift a little bit more now that we're getting back into the quote unquote normal times. You're seeing a little bit more pick up in business and conference travel. You know, we, we were actually just in Vegas last week and nice. the conference situation there is much more on the quote unquote normal side than where'd it you was, stay in Vegas? you know, a year and a half ago. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Where, where, where'd you stay in Vegas? Oh, I stayed at the Venetian because that's where nice. the uh, com the conference was. Paul's yeah, it was the big. I'm, I'm a Bellagio guy. Next <laughs> next time you can go there, use my name. Yeah, they'll, they'll take care of you. So <laughs> what, you know what? I, no, I, the Bellagio um, is beautiful. Yeah, I, you so. know, just while uh, we're playing with hypotheticals here in terms of the debt, um, would they, with this kind of deal, sell debt in the market, or would they go to a private um, credit credit place? and get a loan there because now we're starting to see deals. I think we saw a $5 billion private credit deal. And the idea is that these numbers are going to keep growing so they could handle this. What, what do you think? I think we're a little bit in early stages to figure out how they go financing. Uh, Choice did indicate that I they just thought it would be fun, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> would it be an option? I mean, Choice. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's definitely anything's a possibility. Let, let me put it that way. Anything's okay. a possibility. That said, um, Choice indicated that they are working with two bank banking companies that, you know, two bankers that said that they could give them financing, you know, give them short term financing while they go and secure longer term. That said, yeah, I mean, the public markets, it's really a question of timing. So companies come to market and it's terrible timing and they get these horrible rates like we saw with some of the other companies I cover. Uh, then they'll come to market, they'll get these fantastic rates. So it, it really is just a matter of, of, of timing and it's a matter of, of how comfortable people are with the deal. Now, in normal times, the lodging industry is, is usually pretty sleepy. People aren't super excited by it unless there's some sort of transaction that happens. Then it becomes a little bit more interesting. 